Hello, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries, and today I'd like to give you a really nice video on how to use the thread, the various thread options, the way you can create threads on things. And so, just to let you know, we're going to start with uh, the simplest way, <clears throat> and that is if you start with a cylinder, it, whether it be an extruded circle or the cylinder command, you can go to the thread function, here it is, thread function, and you can go to a symbolic thread or a detailed thread. And of course this video deals with when you need to do a detailed thread. And you could select the cylindrical face, and there's a vector that's created that shows you the uh, kind of thread it's going to make. And of course it senses the diameter and it shows you the uh, the kind of thread it's going to make. So this one's going to be a one inch UNC. You can see that the thread size is uh, 78-9 and um, we're able to uh, change that. <clears throat> so we could go to a 1-8 and then when you say OK it creates a thread for you just like that. So that's really neat. Then the next thing you could do if you don't do a cylinder you can do a revolve and you can do the same thing on a revolve and you can make it the current feature now when you uh, create the thread you'll probably want to let's just get rid of that you'll probably want to verify the diameter that you're going to use because when you do a 1-8 let's say then the cylinder diameter should be 0.985 and so you'll know that because NX will basically tell you and so for this one right here I did a revolve and the revolve was just a simple sketch as you can see and here we could put in a formula 0.985 divided by 2 that's what I did so that's nice that you can just uh, find out what the uh, pole size is or the diameter of the revolve that you need and then you can make a thread like that. Great. So that's uh, how easy it is to use the detailed thread function but sometimes you need to do something a little bit more complex and so what I'm doing here is on this uh, cylinder or in this cylindrical body is I'm creating a sketch and that sketch is very special because what we do is we figure out what pitch we want in this case I want a, a one millimeter pitch I'm sorry a, a, um, a one inch pitch and uh, what I'm doing here is I'm multiplying the uh, pitch, uh, rather, I, I don't want a one-inch pitch. I, I want I want eight um, threads in one inch. So it's a it's a one dash eight, right? And so what I'm doing is I'm multiplying eight times the diameter d times pi, and I'm getting a length of this uh, this line here, this angled line, and a height of this angled line. And what I'm doing is I'm establishing the angle that's necessary to give me the pitch that I want. That's what I'm doing. And then I multiply it out this way so it's long enough to wrap around as many times as I want. And what I'm going to do with this sketch on the datum plane that's tangent to this face here is I'm going to do a wrap command. Here's the wrap command. And when you wrap, you know, you select the uh, select, you select what you're going to wrap, you select the face that you're going to wrap it on, and you select the datum plane where that's defined and then this whole thing wraps on. That's why this little point is here because that point is there. So the whole sketch is wrapped onto the onto the uh, face of the uh, uh, cylindrical body. And then uh, what I've done here is I've made a sketch on path. So this sketch is right on the path of that helical wrapped shape. So it's not so easy to see. There it is. Okay, 
And then I do a sweep. I do a sweep swept because the sweep along the guide isn't smart enough to take that section and hold it uh, parallel. So sweep swept is the only thing to do. And when you do the swept, sweep swept, you'll want certain options. You'll want the preserve shape turned on and you'll want to do uh, orient to face normals so that everything stays on top like that or it sh I should say parallel and then you uh, simply do a subtract so there's that so that's yet another one that's an yet another way of controlling the threads of making the kinds of threads that you want and not leaving it up to NX to uh, provide a profile for you so when you really want to control everything you've got to do it this way okay so now the next up make current feature on the next thing so here is another extrude and what we're doing here is different we're going to make a little sketch that goes right down through the middle of this thing and the little sketch the purpose of that little sketch is to define a helix so you can define a helix with the pitch that you want and the number of turns that you want and then you don't have to do this kind of mathematical calculation with your diameter and pi and all of that. So um, this is what I did. I used the helix command. And then, of course, my next move was to... Uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't cut the threads on this. I just wanted to show you that you could just use a helix. And if you wanted to make threads on that, you could. Okay. So then the next up is when you want a thread to follow a conical face. And this is really cool. So basically you start with a sketch that looks like this. And I'll just go back up a step because there is something special about this. When you have this sketch, you have to have a line segment that starts right here. It starts right where your threads are going to start climbing up this ramp. So I made this sketch, but I didn't make this and this one line. It's actually two different lines. And I wanted the helix to start right here, parallel with this spot. So that's what, that's why that's like that. And what I'll then do is I'll use the helix command, and I'll select just that one top line to, to um, have a helix follow along it. And then what's available in the helix command is the ability to control the radius by another portion of the sketch and that's a by law curve uh, control on your radius so then you've got the pitch in this case it's 0.125 you've got the number of turns 32 and uh, like I said the radius is dictated by this angular line in the sketch so now when you revolve that sketch your helix your helix and let's show you in shaded mode your helix is right on top of that conical face see cool then you or in this case I made another sketch right on path sketch on path and that's really important to do sketch on path because it's really it really has to be um, oriented the the datum plane has to be oriented so it's perpendicular to the run out of this helical curve in other words, it's not straight up and down. I can prove it to you by doing that, zooming in. See, it's at a slight angle, and that is the angle of this conical helix. So there's one that you say three times fast, the angle of a conical helix, the angle of a conical helix, the angle of a conical helix. <laughs> and it's a good tongue twister. And then, of course, I made a uh, another sketch here, and I did another sweep. And that sweep, make current feature, make current feature, that sweep has to be a sweep swept. And this time, instead of holding that steady by following the face normals, I held it steady with an option called the forced direction. So the forced direction goes right up through the center. I literally se selected the the uh, line segment that goes right up the center of this thing and so um, the vector that's forcing this um, that's forcing this um, shape 
to be in the right orientation is right in the middle. And then finally, I united it, a current feature, and then on the top, the uh, helix went just a little too far. You can see if I do that, it's went a little too far. So then I just finally trimmed it off, a current feature. So there, that's a lot of ways that if you need helix, if you need uh, threads or some sort of helical function, there's a lot of the uh, functionality in there. Well, thank you very much for allowing me to um, do these videos for you. It's uh, quite, a, quite a privilege. And um, there's, of course, many more on our YouTube channel. Um, and you can go to www.designviz.com and find out much more. Again, this is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries. Thank you very much. Take care.